Let's just get this straight. A police officer who was doing his job, potentially saving the lives of colleagues as a two and a half ton car was being driven as hard as it could be at them, he is identified and put on trial for murder and now has a £10,000 bounty on his head from gangsters. Meanwhile, the man, of course, who was in the car at the time, a gangster, a criminal from the age of 13, he, he was given protection there. He was allowed to have this case brought forward in the first place. Now, no one is saying for one moment that he deserved to die. Chris Cabart did not deserve to die. He deserved to be brought to justice. He was wanted in connection, as I say, with two killings, one very, very soon uh, prior to the uh, incident where he was shot dead in Streatham. But who is running the justice system? Kenny Noy. You have, a, you have a copper doing his job. He's now identified for the, for the rest of his life that man will be looking over his shoulder. I don't know whether he has a wife, a partner, a family. I, no, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I have no idea where he lives. And now you, now you have a judge, for the love of God, ruling that his identity, photographs, must be protected. Well, with the greatest of respect, your worships and your honour, why did you ever let him be identified in the first place? Why didn't he go to trial as, I think it was NX121? Yes, it was. N why, why did he go to trial as Sergeant Martin Blake? Why NX121? And why on earth was Cabba's family allowed to ensure that the details of his criminal past were never made public? We now learn that an assistant commissioner of the Met wrote to the judge saying there was a real potential for civil unrest if the details of Cabba's background was not made known. Because it could have been, it could have been used by people to try and mobilise a degree of unrest towards the police and we could have had real violence on the streets. Now, and I say for the second time, Mr Cabar did not deserve to die in those circumstances. He did deserve to go to court and to be a face of prosecution and possible conviction. No question about that. But how come the fa And now you have the justice system. Oh, God, don't let any pictures out. Don't, oh, no, 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 no details of the man's address, family background or whatever. You're mad. He should have stood trial as NX121. I said at the time, I remember saying, because I have someone who's in that part of the policing, that it was a very, very bad day for justice when Blake was named. And now they're peddling back. Oh, don't, I mean, no pictures. What fools, the law really is an ass. Now, how's that changed your view of the story? Again, third time. He didn't deserve to die in that way. But come on, he was no angel. He's had a criminal background from the age of 13. He shot two people. Again, what does that tell you? Now, we discussed it extensively yesterday. And we weren't able to tell you about Cabba's background and criminal history. But if you recall, I spoke with some high-profile guests to get their views on how the case played out. One was Suella Bravman, the Conservative MP and Home Secretary when the murder charges were brought against Blake in September last year. She told me she felt for Cabba's family, but the officer involved should never have been charged over his death. I don't think they should have been brought here. You know, this sergeant was a very brave and uh, courageous member of our police force. And, you know, they are taking split second decisions, making extremely difficult judgments that I definitely wouldn't be able no, to make. Indeed. Under pressure, life or death decisions, they are not setting out to kill people deliberately. They are setting out to keep the public safe and to catch criminals. And for them to end up in the dock when they are just doing their job totally undermines confidence in them and so I want to put on record my thanks to those brave firearms officers we value them we need them but we do need to if necessary change the system so that they know that they are protected and enabled in that very difficult job. This morning the Prime Minister en route to Chogham the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting confirmed the government will complete a review into the accountability of firearms officers which was begun by Suella Bravman in her stint as Home Sec. Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley is reportedly also calling for greater immunity for officers who use force in the line of duty. Yesterday I spoke with one of his predecessors John now Lord Stevens who says this case needs to be a watershed moment for the way we deal with similar incidents in the future. I think the whole thing needs to be looked at, to look at the raising the level of prosecutions and giving protection to officers who in very, very, very difficult circumstances have to protect us. Uh, and I think that's the least that can happen. What was promised in my time when we had similar problems where we managed to get officers back to using firearms because they actually threatened to, uh, to withdraw their authorizations and not use them was their promises were made in those days that they were going to change the law. It never happened. 
We didn't have another case, fortunately. But in this case, they do need to change the law. Let's bring into the conversation Donna Murray-Turner, who's a community engagement strategist advising the Met at New Scotland Yard. Uh, In the light of what we now know, what's your reaction and view of the fact that the man was ever put up for trial for murder? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, I think first I want to say um, my thoughts are not just with the family, but also we will know that Chris had um, was expecting a child. So my thoughts are also with the mother of that child and how life will now ensue. With regards to um, police officers and what we've now found out, I think there has to be a proportionate conversation. It's a shame that we have um, watershed moments like this that kind of force us into discussion, but I think equally people should be protected when they do their jobs. Um, And that doesn't mean that the law is not transparent or anything is trying to be hid, but people have a right to have their anonymity um, and their families kept safe, especially if they're doing highly sensitive, charged roles. And that's failed here completely, hasn't it? It has. And I think this What's whole case What's your reaction is... to the family succeeding in, me, in the court not bringing into back, uh, Cabba's background to the jury? My, my personal reaction is um, I think it's strategic. Obviously, uh, it was done so that if the information about his criminal past from a young age comes out it does colour, you've led with it twice in the piece, I just listened to you do it Um, so I can see why family and friends would probably not want it to come out but the fact still remain Surely if if you're deciding the fate of someone and his professional or their professional career this is germane to the case isn't it what possible grounds could there be Well I would say yes, but we know that now that his criminal past is known, it has left a flavour and it's left almost a justification. I know you have said several times that it doesn't justify his death, but in media and on the media and social media, it's being used as a, well, it's a justification. Look, well, no, he was a bad ridiculous. boy, he deserved no, to die. That, that, no, he's no angel, but he doesn't deserve to die in those circumstances. 100%. La- but in... Lastly, lastly, oh. there needs to be a new way surely, of police officers involved in these situations. There must be an inquiry. I'm not suggesting for one moment there isn't, but I need to think there needs to be some separate form of tribunal. The IOPC is not fit for purpose. The man should never have been in the Old Bailey. There needs to be a separate form of trial or inquiry. Would you agree? I would agree. I think this, this has to be a more proportionate conversation, less reactionary. And I've really enjoyed our conversation. Donna Murray-Turner, thank you. Your community engagement strategist working with the Met's Foreign Police. Alan Knapp is a former detective sergeant with the Met's Flying Squad. Joins me now. Your overview of what we learned over the last uh, 48, 24, 48 hours. Morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Nick. Um, I totally agree with your your last uh, comments about the IOPC being totally unfit for purpose. Uh, my perspective as a former firearms officer is that many police officers that are armed on a daily basis will reflect on this case and will consider the ramifications of it. Clearly, um, a whole framework needs to be reformed. Uh, Many police officers, I think, will consider handing in their tickets from the point of view of not carrying firearms as a consequence of this case. So we can't put our confidence in the IOPC, Alan. What do we, because you will be the first to say, and I know you carried firearms in your, when you were in the job, if you take someone's life, there has to be an investigation. So who should handle it in your view? I think there needs to be a separate independent body. Um, there needs to be strict guidelines. There needs to be a time frame for which an investigation is carried out and the a result and decision made from that investigation. And should there be any proceedings, whether it be criminal or disciplinary, that there has to be a set time frame so the officer concerned knows exactly where he stands. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Um, Also, I'd like to add that when Suella Braverman said that she would appoint this review to look at this sort of incident, she promised to have the report out by the beginning of this year. It never happened, and this has just continued. It's outrageous from the point of view of any armed officer. There is no one prepared to draw a line under this and deal with it. Alan, lastly, we had Tony Long on the show yesterday, someone you probably you'll know of, if not know directly. He's picking up that there's a, a real sense that people, young men, women, just don't want to sign up for this work anymore, that there could be real depletion in numbers. You touched on that briefly. You agree with that, Alan? I do, certainly, yes. This definitely needs to be dealt with, uh, as a, otherwise there will be consequences for not only the Metropolitan Police, but for the police service in the UK as a whole. Grateful for your time, Alan Knapp. You served as Detective Sergeant with the Met. So, protection 
for the gangster involved in this, who was wanted in connection with two shootings believed of rivals, he got protection in the courts. You couldn't know about, we couldn't tell you about his background. Exposed the police officer for the rest of his life now will look over his shoulder, as well if he has one, his family, because he couldn't, they would not proceed with him as NX121. Can anybody rationalise that? And what now of a new way, a new tribunal, a new court, a new investigative arm, whatever it is, to look at cases such as these?